Wait, 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 wait before you just go to the main part. Let me introduce myself. Hi, hello guys, this is Medbits, your exam savior, and today we'll be discussing about knee complex part one biomechanics. And uh, guys, before starting, I'm just going to say a brief about our channel. That is, we'll be discussing the uh, subjects such as physiology, biomechanics, and biochemistry. So stay tuned for that, and we'll be uploading videos for that soon. So let's begin. Okay guys, now the topics being covered in this video are Introduction to the knee complex Tibiofemoral joint Knee complex articulation Femoral distal Tibial articular surface Menisci Genuvalgum Knockney and Genuvarum bony So, let's begin Okay guys, now coming to the functions of knee complex As we all know that knee complex is a complex unit which provides stability and mobility and which also has a main role in weight bearing etc as we all know it so the articulations of knee joint are femur and tibia which forms tibio femoral joint and the next articulation is patella and femur so patello femoral joint okay guys now coming to the functions of knee complex it provides stability and mobility its major function is that giving us stability and mobility during standing and coming to the next one is support body during dynamic and static activities right and coming to the next one in closed caging it works with hip and ankle joints to support body weight in static erect posture now i know that most of you didn't understand so just try to stand up and then observe your hip knee and ankle now as you can see your body weight is going through your hip and then to your knee and then to your ankle so it is a proper like uh, equilibrium of giving the weight down right so your knee is static it is so tight so that is closed caging now coming to the next one in open caging knee provides mobility for foot in space now just try to sit down so as you can see that now the knee doesn't have any job right it is so free it doesn't bear the weight of a uh, hip or or it doesn't have to give the weight to the ankle right so just try to lift up your foot as you can see the knee is very free now just try to give some range of motion to your knee so you can know that how free it is so coming to the next one dynamically support during sitting and squatting activities and transferring body weight okay guys now coming to the next topic tibio femoral joint now, it is a double condyloid joint with medial and lateral articular surfaces. Now, it has two degree of freedom, right? Flexion and extension occur in sagittal plane around coronal axis. Medial and lateral rotation occurs in transverse plane and vertical axis. Medial and lateral femoral condyles forms proximal articular surface there are two concave medial and lateral asymmetrical plateaus two concave medial and lateral asymmetrical plateaus anterior view condyles have lesser curvature it has only lesser curvature and medial condyle is larger than the lateral condyle Okay guys, now coming to knee complex articulation. As I have hinted about the joints, tibiofemoral articulation and patellofemoral articulation. And now I am just going to say the importance. Like these joints are very much important. Like this is the core of knee complex. Now this is that important that you have to write this at any cost. And you have to draw the diagram because the diagram is very important that it will give you at least two or one marks or one and a half marks so you don't want to throw that right so come on guys i'm your savior so just 
learn this. This is that simple. Now just listen to my voice and let's just begin with it. Coming to the next slide, femoral distal. Ah, now we have a problem here. Yes, you have to say distal, proximal, anterior, posterior, medial, lateral. I know this is confusing, but you have to use it. You have no other way. See, when it comes to exam point, you have to write which is the proximal part, which is the distal part. Now, if you write it lower end of the tibia or lower end of the fibula or anything, the examiner will say that, uh, I don't think so. If you write it proximal or distal, you will say, okay, now he knows something, okay. They will think that you are studious, you know. So, just use it. Okay, now coming to the topic. The knee is the largest weight bearing joint in our body, right? The distal femur makes up the top part of our knee joint. It has a notch in between condyles known as intercondylar notch and a groove on anterior known as femoral sulcus or patella groove. The end of femur are covered in a smooth slippery substance called articular cartilage. This cartilage protects and cushions the bone when we bend and straighten our knee. This is the continuation of distal articulation of knee joint which is tibial articular surface. The tibia is a medial and large long bone of the lower extremity. It connects the knee and ankle joint. It is considered to be the second largest bone in the body and it plays an important role in weight bearing. The proximal part of tibia include medial and lateral condyles. As you can see, the medial condyle is bigger than the lateral. The tibial plateau and then the tibial tuberosity. Now to locate the tibial tuberosity, uh, you guys can try it on your knee. Where you just try to place your hand just below the patella, you will see a small bulging on your uh, tibia. So that is a tibial tuberosity and the fibula, fibular notch and they are two concave medial and lateral asymmetrical plateaus. Medial condyle is 50% larger and the, sorry, than lateral condyle. Coming to the next topic, menisci. Now menisci is a very important question when coming to the aspect of theory. It can be asked for 3 marks. Or if a question regarding knee joint comes, this is a must write topic. Okay, now coming to the point. Tibiofemoral joint is a incongruent joint as the sharp convex femur condyles are resting on comparatively concave and plateau tibia condyles. The peripheral of tibia condyle is slightly convex. It looks like a dip. The incongruency in articulation, it is overcome by what? A cushion-like effect of meniscus. Now that's the role of meniscus. Menisci is a hero of knee. You just think that. Menisci are two asymmetrical fibrocartilaginous joint discs on tibial condyles that enhances the congruence of knee joint. Medial meniscus is semi-circle also known as semi luna in shape whereas lateral meniscus is 4 by 5th of a circle both the meniscus open towards intercondylar area they are thick peripherally and thin centrally forming a concavities both menisci are attached to intercondylar tubercles of tibia tibial condyle via coronary ligament, patella via patellomeniscal and patellofemoral ligaments, transverse ligament and ACL which is anterior cruciate ligament. Now guys please do look on to the diagram for better understanding. Coming to the functions of menisci, 
it increases concavity and hence the joint congruence. Distribute weight bearing forces by dissipating load axially. Reduces friction between joints and hence decreases stress on articulation. Serve as a shock absorbers. Coming to the next slide. Menisci injury. Now this is the topic under meniscus and it is very important. It's very easy to learn. I'll help you through. Menisci tear is common among athletes. It's a nightmare for them. Treatment is based on age and weight. Meniscal complex is well established in eight weeks old embryo. It is well vascularized in infancy. Vascularity gradually reduces from 18 months to 18 years. Over age 50 only peripherally it is vascularized. The horns remain vascularized throughout life. For person above 50 years, inner area meniscus damage is tough to manage as that area is avascular. Now as you can see on the diagram which is on the right side, that's a normal meniscus and there are different types of tears. That is a longitudinal tear, as you see, bucket handle tear, flap, it will be flapping, then transverse, then torn horn. Yeah. And then coming to the last one, peripheral meniscus tear is self-repaired by inflammation and maintenance so that you stay put in one place and you won't try to do more mobility. Result of nosy receptors and mechanical receptors. Wait, wait, wait guys, don't skip this. This is very important question. Genu valgum and genu varum is going to be a real sure question for you guys. It's very easy and very important to learn. It can be also asked as knock knee and bow knee. So let's begin, shall we? So due to the oblique shape of femur, the longitudinal axis is slightly shifted for femur. Whereas in tibia, it passes through the center itself. Angle formed between these two axes is medial tibiofemoral angle. As said before, due to obliquity of femur, normal medial tibiofemoral angle is 185 degrees instead of 180 degrees. Hence, there is physiological valgus. If medial tibiofemoral angle is more than 185 degrees, it is known as genu valgum or known as knock knee. Okay. Now coming to the causes, genetic condition, example is rickets, obesity, injury to the growth area of the shin board, tibia, that is on the tibia or thigh bone femur. Genu varum or known as bow knee. If medial tibiofemoral angle is less than 175 degrees, it is known as genu varum, also known as bow knee. Yeah. Almost all babies are born bow legged. There is usually little or no effect on the ability to walk for those with genu varum. Children usually have no symptoms while adults may feel some discomfort on their outside knees. Then if left untreated, then however, uneven stress and wear on the knees often leads to what early onset of arthritis. The most common cause of genu varum is the same as genu valgum rickets or any other condition that prevents a bone from forming properly. Skeletal problems, infection and tumors can affect the growth of the leg, which can cause one leg to be bored. Arthritis, if it affects the inside of knee more than the outside, then it can lead to bored legs as it can fracture that does not heal properly. Now guys, this is the simple way for you to remember what is genu varum and genu valgum. 
now uh, for most of you when you reach to exam you may write it may uh, in a opposite manner you may mean genu varam but you may write genu varanga it happens it's very common so i'm just giving you a simple tip for you to remember as you can see genu varam you can see a bottle which is placed and which bulges the knee outward and you can see genu valgum where both the knees are sticking together also known as knock knee bow knee you can see it right yeah so yeah that will be it congratulations you have completed part 1 of knee complex biomechanics and yes you are almost there you are almost there and the part 2 it consist of screw home mechanism and the other upcoming topics screw home mechanism is very important for your theory aspect so please don't skip that they may ask that as a five marker for you so it comes with lock yeah locking and unlocking is screw home mechanism and yeah until then we see you on the next video next time so please do subscribe share like okay so thank you and peace out